My friends, welcome to this tutorial about creating games with Solaris. Today we will continue about enemies uh, with another uh, very interesting example. So this time we want to make an enemy that will see the hero and react and change um, its, movement, its movement when the hero is detected. So by default we want the enemy to just um, randomly walk in one of, of the four main directions and we want to detect the presence of the hero and when the hero is detected we will change the movement to go towards the hero and to, also to run faster. So let's try it, let's see how to do that. Um, I'm going to open my enemy script I will remove the things from previous examples. Uh, I don't need to shoot flame, that was the previous tutorial. So here, here I, I have a very basic and simple behavior that I think you, that I hope you already understand. Um, because that what, that's basically what we saw in the first tutorial about enemies, which was uh, tutorial number 20. So just um, we create a movement here of type random path, which means um, he, that he will walk randomly in one of the four main directions. But nothing else happens. Uh, he, the enemy does not detect at all the presence of the hero. So, how to change that? Uh, the idea is to make a timer, a repeated timer, um, that will regularly check if the hero is close to the enemy. So how do we do that? Let's make our timer. Timer start. Remember the first parameter of the timer is its context and that defines the lifetime of your timer. If the enemy dies we want the timer to silently uh, disappear and Remember that the timer will also be reset when the enemy is hurt. Okay, uh, let's say we want to repeat every uh, 100 milliseconds, which means 10 times per second. And then we need, we need some code to detect if the hero is close to us. So we could make, uh, sorry, local um, hero close to hero or hero detected um, so the most basic way to test that is to just check the distance between the enemy and the hero so we could do that with a simple uh, computation based on their coordinates but there is a function that does that for us and its uh, entity gets distance to another entity. So that will return the distance in pixels between both get distance to the hero and if this distance is lower than let's say 100 pixels or 97 pixels to just to keep it a, a multiple of 16 because everything is based on this grade of 16 or at least a multiple of 8 but that's really a detail it, it, there is nothing wrong with just 100 but um, <clears throat> I don't know I like keeping multiples of the of the base grid and if hero detected then we will we'll call another function go hero let's call it that way and otherwise we will call the function go random so go random is is actually this code here that we already have you define this function on our enemy 
go random and we want to do another one called get go hero this time it's a movement of type target and maybe we want it to go faster we want the enemy to kind of run 64 pixels per second for example um, so that would work except for one small detail is that oh first I forgot to return true to repeat the timer and the wh what is wrong here is that even when the state does not change we will call one of these uh, 10 times per second so if the enemy is already going to the hero this will be called again multiple times and it will always recreate the same kind of movement of movement uh, which will I have an unexpected side effect yeah, oh first 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 I did something wrong yeah it's the my enemy is called enemy um, by the way this enemy variable is defined here and the hero variable is defined there um, yeah remember this syntax here it means that um, the engine will call this whole file for each instance of enemy with this model and um, yeah the file itself the, the whole Lua file here is actually just a function and like any other function it has it can have some parameters but since we don't write uh, functions something and we don't give names to to these parameters there is a special syn syntax to to get it um, so yeah basically since it's an enemy script the engine will give us our enemy object uh, using this and it's similar to map script uh, when you have map remember you you get the map object like that um, anyway I was trying to explain that there is a small problem as you can see maybe maybe you can notice that the animation of the sprite is not working here except if I'm far away again um, and additionally at the end here you could see that he was changing his direction all the time and it's precisely because every 100 milliseconds uh, we call one of these so we call them too often and actually we don't have to call it again if it's already in that state um, yeah if you call since this function is called again over and over again 10 times per second it recreates a movement and um, that will give another direction it will likely to, to change the direction again uh, too, too often so in this function sets the direction of our sprite uh, basically what I'm trying to say is that we should call one of these only if the state has changed so let's store our state in a boolean variable going hero initially false um, and when you call go random going hero you set it to false again and when you call go hero you set it to true and here we want to go to the hero only if the hero is detected and when we were not going to the hero towards the hero already and similarly we want to go random only if we were going towards the hero and the hero is no longer detected basically no need to um, to restart the the same state when when it is not when it does when it has not changed 
So that just fixed our sprite animation. And now, yeah, I was uh, far away again, so he went back to the random mode. Okay, cool. Oh, why did it not restart here? What? <laughs> ah, I forgot to initialize. Yeah, small bug. I forgot uh, that was not intentional to to call enemy go random initially. So I didn't give any initial state. It was working by luck because uh, I started a timer here. But after the enemy was hurt, the timer started again. Mm, but um, he was detected was still true. So nothing was happening. I want to go random unconditionally uh, when the enemy starts or restarts after being hurt. Okay, so as you can see, as soon as you implement multiple states for your enemy, it starts being complicated and it's easier to to have some bugs. And I think it's it's something normal. Uh, you have multiple states, and um, you need to. We, so we are using this variable to store which state we are in. So here it's still simple enough because there is there are only two possible states. But um, when you make a, a more complicated enemy or a boss, um, it, it it's getting more and more complicated. So that's why enemies are. Um, I think one of the most difficult scripts to to write, but hopefully this is uh, still understandable. <laughs> you want to to switch the state when uh, you have some condition that is true and uh, you are not yet in that new state. Um, okay, something else we should probably improve is that our enemy will notice us even if we are behind his back, like this. Because we only check the distance, we don't care at all uh, about in which direction the sprite is uh, looking. So let's improve that. What we want to do is that if the, for instance, if the enemy is here and the hero is there, we want to be noticed only if the enemy is looking uh, to the south here. So here it, we would be noticed, but not here, okay? And if we are there, maybe we would be noticed. Um, and, but not, not like this. So how, how do we do that? We need to um, implement some... We need to check the angle between our enemy and the hero. And we want to round this angle to one of the four main directions. So um, east, north, west, south. And if that main direction corresponds to the direction of the sprite of the enemy, then yes, we consider that we detected the hero. So, again, <laughs> you don't have to make any computation because we have some helper functions to help you. Um, first, we have get angle to have the angle in radians between the enemy and the hero, or between uh, any arbitrary two entities. But we even have this one, which is basically the same, but rounded to one of the four main directions. So that's really what we want here. Um, okay, no need to that. Okay, sorry. Um, so the hero is detected if the distance is 
lower than 96 pixels and second additional condition we want uh, we want the sprite of the enemy so the variable sprite is declared there and it's initialized here so our sprite is already in a four direction system so we want the direction of the sprite to be the same as the direction towards the hero so the angle towards the hero but instead of the angle in radiant we we want the angle in the the four direction systems system get uh, get direction for to hero and actually that's it so in this four direction systems system zero is right one is north uh, two is west and uh, three is south I should have said zero is east and not right as you prefer okay so here it does not detect me until he until he actually turns back I'm not detected still not detected maybe he will randomly look at me okay so that's a bit more realistic um, okay something else we forgot is well so far we we were only thinking in two dimensions right but what happens if oops this floor has moved what happens if I'm one layer below the the enemy he will still notice me because uh, yeah the code that detects the hero only checks the the distance and the direction of the sprite but it should also test the layer unless you you are okay with this behavior here in this particular example maybe it's okay because um, the enemy is actually in a, on a platform above the hero but if you want you can have this additional condition enemy get layer equals hero get layer so get layer will just return the number corresponding to the layer so here our enemy is on layer zero and our hero is on layer minus one so here he should not react at all yeah if I go back this time I can be detected um, yeah also small detail don't don't forget to put some invisible walls for example like that just to stop the enemies but not the hero in all your doors I usually do that layer minus one like this okay um, yeah and if you want something more complicated for example let's say the enemy is on layer minus one here um, maybe you want the enemy to detect the other hero when he's one layer above but not when he's one layer below uh, in this case you want uh, your your test to be slightly more complicated where is it okay it's here <laughs> so here i won't be detected but we could have some code to let the the enemy detect me when he's the one one layer above but when not when i'm the one one layer above so everything is really is really possible i think this example is good enough for for today um Again, try to organize your enemies in clearly separate 
separated states and to store your state somewhere and that will that will help you um, separate the, the different behaviors of your enemies. Um, okay, so thank you all for watching. Please join our Discord if you want, if you need more explanation. I know enemies are complicated, but we will continue to to make more more examples of, of them and hope you for, hopefully that will help. Thank you again, and that's all for now. Bye.